we go. Ah, oh, and, and we do have Danny. Daniel Wrench here on chess.com. And he's playing a uh, Staunton Gambit against my Dutch defence. Uh, obviously, he's a very, very strong player. Going to have to play very quickly against this guy. It's very, very difficult to play now at, this, at the speed that Danny is going at and to commentate on it as well. But, uh, but Danny is a fantastic uh, at this himself. Uh, you should really tune in to his, uh, his bullet pools. And he's, uh, there we go, we see some kind of tactic going down from Danny already. And that's fine. Um, but his knight on f7 is a little bit short on squares, so we'll, we'll see how that works out for him. This is already crazy. Why did my king go forward there? It should have gone to uh, f4 straight away. But okay, it's not a not a hundred percent a disaster yet. And uh, I'm a couple of seconds down on the clock, and one pawn in arrears. So, but maybe I could make use of the fact that my bishop's quite a decent piece in this ending, and we will see how that works out. Uh, but uh, his king is very very active. And uh, that knight is a very doing a very good job of just jumping around and causing havoc. Let's get that b pawn moving because uh, I need some control of these light squares. And uh, maybe I can catch him in a mating there. That would be nice. That would be kind of cool. Let's go king b5. And if he takes the rook off, I got c4 mate. And uh, that was uh, that. That was a maybe maybe a trick not to try. On another international master, it uh, it it kind of looked cool at the time, but uh, oh, we'll we'll come back and have a look at the, at some of these games later on, I'm sure. But let's go ahead and jump right into a rematch now, and we have a Sicilian defence. So I'm going to play a Rosalimo, three bishop b5, and then chop it off and play d3, and we will see. Ooh, he's allowed me to play some kind of h4 line. This is always fun like to get a bit of hacking going and uh, the g pawn is instrumental to um, hack attack harry the h pawn is uh, our favorite friend and uh, i don't, don't really like his position so much early on got to be a bit careful of problems along this long diagonal and as i say that uh, problems all along the long diagonal are looming and they're looming large but uh, i managed to hold things together at least for the time being don't seem to have lost too much material. Um, and uh, roughly equal on the clock. Um, we have some kind of ending, but uh, a very interesting ending. Um, can I give up a piece here? Why, why not? I'm going to give up a piece because this is hack attack. And we don't care about pieces here. We care about, uh, about fantastic looking uh, positions. And maybe it wasn't the best decision. But I, I've got him confused, which is good. I was trying to kind of relying on this pin. But uh, it's, it doesn't really work, but um, but that's fine. Because, oh, he's trying a little trick there. But bishop f3 check, I've got king e3 hitting his rook. So we will see how that works out. It's This game is completely crazy at the moment. And... Uh, I need to be moving faster than I am. And let's get this H pawn moving down the board. Oh no, and my rook is trapped. And he's got plenty of time to, to win this game. And there we go. And Danny takes a 2-0 lead. Well, we're not going to let him get away with that. What to play now? Let's play a French. And play some swap line with an early e5. Let's see if I can confuse him in this. I've played quite a lot of one minute chess in this line before actually. So maybe the bishop's better on d6 actually. But but hey. Or c5. Let's put it on c5 actually. Suddenly realise that that's definitely where it wants to be. And I'm going to go ahead and pin that knight. And then have off on h3. On f3, sorry, and then knight h5. 
going to try and swing a few pieces over towards the king side. Uh, he's going to go queen e2 and cover things here, I think. And then maybe I should go king g7 and cover things up a little bit. Has he not found king e queen e2 yet? Okay, he's found it. But that cost him precious time on the clock. So if I can... If I can keep playing sensibly here, I might be able to score my my first point against Mr. Danny. But uh, yeah, I'm not not liking my position quite as much as I was earlier on. Just trying to trying to get a few tactics in here, trying to confuse my opponent. Let's see what he's going to do against that. And uh, I'm hitting his rook on g1. He's going to play rook e1 at some point. It's chaos. But I actually think the ending has worked out rather pleasantly for me. And he takes that off. And he goes rook c4 in here. But this time round, I'm the one that's up on the clock. And hopefully, I'm not going to blow this because... Uh, the position is very, very equal, but uh, the extra time that I have on the clock should be counting for something. And let's put the rook behind the pass pawn, because that's where rooks belong. And there we go. And a little pre-move error there from Danny allows me to finally get on the scoreboard in this mini matchup. Ooh, just need to uh, have a sip of my drink here. Re-establish some kind of uh, understanding with what, what it is that's going on. And I'm going to play e4. Let's see if he gives another Sicilian a whirl. If he does, I'm going to play b3. And uh, give this uh, interesting variation a bit of a whirl and see what happens. Going to just aim to do damage along this long diagonal. What's he taking so much time over? Well... I'm sure Danny was having some problems there. I didn't, he didn't need to spend quite so long thinking about what to do against 2b3. I mean, it's a bit unusual, but uh, not as unusual as all that. And there we go. We've seen a very quick castle's queen, uh, king side from Danny, which means h4 is coming, and there is the hack. And now it's time to uh, just throw some pieces down the board. I want to get g4 going and g5. And my opponent isn't really going to sit around and wait for me to do that. So he's started an attack of his own. Uh, but uh, I don't want to let him close off that side of the board. So just going to open things up with g6. A couple of seconds up on the clock, but uh, no big deal. It's all about the attack here. Let's double rooks on the g line. I wanted queen g3 to work, but he had... Um, he had something, he had uh, he had some good move against that. And uh, as I'm saying all of this, my position's falling apart. But with obviously kind of bishops in this kind of position, uh, what is going on? Takes on g6, takes on there. It's mate, isn't it? Whoops. I've got to take back. Queen c2, check king a1. But I do not have a good feeling about this. I'm probably walking into a mating net, but uh, but maybe not. Maybe I'm not walking into a mating net. Who knows? And I've got my own mating threats of rook h8, mate. And could we be equalising up the score? Queen c1 check doesn't work. I'm hiding my king around. And there we go. He's doing a last ditch sacrifice here. But I uh, don't think it's going to change the result. Oh yeah, it's craziness with the time, but hey, and my king's running away to a3, that's all good news, and then a couple more checks, and he does lose on time, queen for a rook up there, and we equalise the score at 2 well, I think I think Danny's been the more impressive throughout these two games, but, um, but the score is even up at 2-all, so we'll say maybe... So, yeah, we have a rubber match now. Finale. Uh, and uh, winner takes it all. And... Oh, 
oh, I can't play the Sicilian in such a crucial game. The French is the best opening. That's what I'm going to play. I'm going to play three knights e6, a bit of entertainment here. And he has to play some exchange variation because, you know, he's trying to stop me having some fun, but it's fine. I meant to put the bishop on f5, but let's just go with this. Oh, whoops, I've just given him quite a lot of extra tempi. But the bishop really did mean to be on f5. Oh, no. Well, not going to make that an excuse. We'll just fight back and fight back until we can fight no more. And let's throw these down the board because, you know, it's not about having more pawns than your opponent. It is about having uh, having the better looking attack. And where is my where is my fantastic mate here? Oh, this should be a mate. Look, I've got his king all caught up over there. But, uh, but you know, because there's no justice in the world, there, there wasn't a checkmate straight away. So, you know, Danny luckily survives to, to fight another day. But, uh, you know, I'm throwing a few pieces kind of down by his king. And we'll we'll see how that works out for us. Um, you know he's got he's got something of an attack going himself, threading some ninety five shenanigans. Got to stop. Uh, but I just I just need to give mate to win this game. Oh, that doesn't work because he's got c four covered. But uh, I can take this off. It's craziness here oh and there's an extra piece queen e8 check i got rook f8 let's take that off what's going on here six seconds uh he should be running out of time here Uh, and it's going to be a draw because I'm going to run out of material. Well, we'll call it a draw. Oh, well, he, he wants to play another game. Well, uh, two and a half all. Well, okay, I've got the white pieces. Oh, he says, uh, yeah, we're not calling it a draw. We're men. And, uh, and real men play and fight to the death. Okay, well, fight to the death. Let's play 1f4. The uh, the bird's opening, the, the opening of, of all men out there. And he's gone for the Fromm's Gambit in response. So here, here we see proper hacking attack from both sides as early as we can. As early as move one from both guys, the intention was made clear. Let's have blood on the board in this game and uh, and finish it up. Um, it's all chaos at the moment. Got to move quickly. Uh, one of the interesting things, and because we're moving so quickly here, I'm actually barely looking at the clock. It's making it very, very difficult to even have a vague sense of how much time we both have the whole time. Um, but it. Uh, Maybe I should be paying more attention to um, who's got the better position on the board. Because that doesn't appear to be me right now. Uh, I seem to have dropped a pawn. But uh, uh, I want it back for the time being. And then maybe a little check. He's going to play bishop d5 here. Pretty certain he's going to play bishop d5. And then I go cross, maybe queen d4. Uh, I just don't want to lose all of my pieces. 34 seconds to 27. I'm a few minute, few bits and pieces down on time. Rook e8, can I take this off? Well, I'm probably about to find out why I can't play this, but um, but I'm going to do it anyway. I've uh, got an extra pawn here and an outside pass pawn as well. So, But uh, my last couple of moves weren't great, if I'm being honest. So let's keep all of my pawns nice and protected and retreat this back here. Maybe give a check on d3. That looks like a good idea. Oops, he's a, he, he reckoned about without that pre-move. 
Oh, that was a horrible pre-move blunder. But okay, my opponent's not got an awful lot of time left. How's he going to win this in time? Case of can Danny finish me off in time here? Oh, sorry about that, Danny. I feel I feel bad, but uh, I feel I'm gonna just tell him that in the chat. I feel bad. It's uh, it's one minute chess. I, I I can't I can't allow you to uh, to draw. You know you got got to demonstrate the correct king and pawn ending defense there. All right, uh, cheers, Danny. Um, 